You're listening to Devotions with Pastor Daniel Williams, taken from the Redemption Church YouTube channel. Well, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us as we dig into God's Word together here live on YouTube or uh, through the podcast, your audios, your ears are listening. Uh, man, we're sort of starting somewhat of a, a mini series going through Acts chapter 16 through 19 and looking at Paul's second missionary journey weekly together. Uh, this is how the gospel first came into uh, Europe and it was incredibly important for the gospel to making disciples and the New Testament. Now this of course uh, messages is inspired by my recent trip to Greece and Turkey where I was actually able to walk the footsteps of Paul with a group of pastors uh, visiting these areas, these cities actually found in verses uh, 16, chapter 16 through 19. And so at the end of these devotionals, especially if you're watching on video, YouTube, I'm going to play some of the uh, video that I took from these places. And I just feel like, you know, this is what the live devotionals are all about, what God is speaking to me, teaching me. And he taught me a lot in this trip. And I'm so grateful for my church family sending me there, being able to go and uh, walk these places and learn the history and just learn these things to be able to share uh not only to them, but to you and the world, what God taught me. And so I'm really grateful that you're here uh, to be able to study the Bible together. And it's going to be fun to be able to do this sort of mini series and just walk through weekly and show you videos, picture and important lessons that I've learned. And so let's get into the text today, right? Acts chapter 16, um, verses 11 through 15. Today, I want to look at the conversion of Lydia, the conversion of Lydia. And at the end of this video um, on this talk, I'll actually show you the river where she is baptized. And so uh, this is where we picked off from last study, Acts chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. Let's just read it together and dive in and we'll get some context more about uh, just Paul's second missionary journey. Uh, it says, so setting sail from Troas, uh, we made a we made a direct voyage to Samarathras and the following day to Neropolis and from there to Philippi, which is leading city in the district of Macedonia, a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days. Now, uh, this is Paul headed into Europe, and this was an unexpected plan uh, of Paul and Titus. Uh, they planned to go strengthen the churches in Asia Minor. In this province of Galatia, uh, we as a church are going to be starting the book of Galatians this Sunday. Super excited for that. Um, but the Holy Spirit in this moment, in this time, in that area, forbid them to go. Uh, this, of course, was unexpected to Paul because he wanted to go preach the gospel and go minister and strengthen the church uh, in this area. But it seemed like the Holy Spirit said, no, uh, again, uh, is there anything wrong? bad going and preaching the gospel, strengthening churches. Absolutely not. But in this text today, we're going to see why. Why did God say no to Paul and this ambition and this good godly thing? Well, he wanted to do a specific work in Europe. He has specific work in Philippi and a specific work in a person, this person named Lydia. And so uh, it's important for us, a good reminder, um, that the Holy Spirit has, um, authority to trump our plans, to reject our plans, even good plans. We see this in the life of Paul. He wanted to go this way and the Holy Spirit said, nope, go the other way. Um, and so we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. These are just things that we talked about last time as Paul was making his way from Troas, from Turkey into uh, across the Aegean Sea into Europe. Paul was um, seeking God at night and the Lord gave him a vision of a Macedonian man. And, and he, they concluded, listen, we, we got to go to this place called Macedonia. Now, Macedonia is a region in Greece, northern Greece. It's across the Aegean Sea from Turkey. And so they set sail from Troas. He heads west and they go to the city called Philippi. It was a leading city in the district of Macedonia and the Roman colony, the text says. And from the start, we see the strategy of Paul. Macedonia was this region in the leading city. It was an influential place where there was tons of people. And Paul wanted to go preach the gospel where there was a lot of people. Uh, this is important for us to notice because oftentimes how we reach people is very important in our strategy of making disciples. Uh, maybe you're thinking popularity, influence, right? Social media, advertising, even miracles or experiences is a way to draw people. Listen, we need to make sure that we're simple in our approach by going and preaching the gospel. That's right. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't go and uh, have this certain strategy of, of 
drawing a crowd or advertising or sending this or spending money. He, he, he wanted to simply go and preach the gospel. Paul's method was always the gospel, Christ crucified and the life in him, surrendering to him. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, Jesus says. Uh, oftentimes we, we sometimes neglect the gospel. We think we have to have a program. Uh, to give you an example, planning a church, our church, you think oh, we have to have a music team and lights and children's ministry. And you think about parking and a building and all this different stuff, which is not bad, but it's not primary. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, I, I want you to know what's priority. The first importance, the gospel that Jesus came according to scripture, died according to scripture, rose again according to scripture. And this gospel, this is what he would preach to Lydia, to Philippi, and to the whole region in Greece, northern uh, Macedonia, uh, northern Greece, Macedonia, and Europe. It's the gospel. We need to make sure we these things don't distract us from the gospel, from preaching God's word. Uh, I know this is a live devotional. And it may not seem that important to you. Uh, maybe you pick up just one or you go through the whole series. But for me, this is uh, utmost important to preach peop- to preach the gospel, to share God's word as a pastor. People are hungry for the truth and we need to give them that, not just a show, not just an experience. How often do we get distracted as Christians by bringing up the good news of Jesus? What is the implication that God loves you? He cares for you. There's a purpose. There's a plan. He's going to make all things new. It's incredible. Paul's method was always the gospel, not even his personality, but he declared, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to save first Jew and then Greek. And so this is what he does. He would usually go into a large city and he would look for a synagogue where people were at to preach there, trusting in the gospel. And then he would go out to the city preaching this gospel. But what is interesting in this text um, is we actually see a lack of presence of Jewish people uh, in this region and in this city because there wasn't a synagogue. Historically, scholars say that uh, there had to be at least 10 Jewish people to have a synagogue, but there was none. So it seemed like... um, There wasn't enough spiritual men in the city to have one. So he goes to the river outside. Look at verse 13 uh, in his approach. He says, and on the Sabbath day, he didn't go to the synagogue. No, he went outside the gate to the riverside where he supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. And so no man by the river, but there were some women and he still preached the gospel to them. They were of value to him. Even though, remember, he had that vision of a man. There was a group of women. What did he say? Well, no, forget you. You're not valued. No, the gospel is for every man, every woman, every child, every soul needs to hear this. I think this is so important as a church to realize kids ministry is so important to preach the gospel. Uh, Women's ministry, men's ministry, marriage ministry, single ministry, like everyone needs the gospel. And you don't see Paul shy back like, well, oh, well, no, he goes after it. He preaches the gospel and he goes uh, as his custom where people are at, seeks them out, preaches and notice how he goes after low hanging fruit. A synagogue or a river is where people would be interested in spiritual things. Paul not only wanted to be fruitful, but he wanted to be effective for the gospel. So he started where it seemed to make sense, where God gave him an open door, where people would be hungry and spiritually seeking God, the synagogue or this place of prayer. And this just made me think, I think application for us, where is the low hanging fruit in our lives, in our city? Like, where do we go where people may be interested? Where has God placed us? Uh, Usually the best start uh, to share the gospel is the natural open doors of relationship God has given us. So Paul was a Jewish scholar and he was um, a very smart in the scriptures. And one of his open doors was a synagogue. So oftentimes in these missionary journeys, you see him go to a synagogue first where the open door is. Now, you may not be a Jewish scholar. You may, but you may not, but you probably have another job, another description. Maybe God's given you an opportunity to speak to other employees, uh, people, uh, man, you know, people I may never be able to reach through a video. You're going to be actually sent and paid to go work at that restaurant, to go work in that office. 
I love it. Right now, there's a member in our church, and he works in the recovery community, and he is constantly giving out Bibles. And it is so cool. It's so amazing because it's low-hanging fruit. It's the opportunity to share the gospel, to share God's word where God has placed him. What skills, what ability, what uh, life has God given you for some low-hanging fruit? A relationship with a cousin, a family member, a daughter, a mother. This is opportunity that God has given us, and we need to start saying, hey, let's start there. That's what low-hanging fruit is, right? Like, hey, before before we go up and high and climb all this, do this different stuff and even be a missionary to the world, how about we try to reach our city like from Jerusalem, Judea, and then Samaria and the ends of the earth? Where can you start this week to share the gospel? Where's the low hanging fruit? And so Paul goes to the river. He goes where people uh, are interested in spiritual things, where he has some context. He shares the gospel and one person responds, not just with the big group of women, but one person responds, Lydia. In verse 14, it says this. The one uh, who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. The story continues to go on and she heard a message and responded. This is how the gospel works. It must be heard and responded. We must repent. We must turn. We must trust, put our faith that Jesus died for our sin and rose again But how will they hear unless they're sent, the Bible says? And how are they sent unless uh, God sends us? And he has sent us to to proclaim and preach the gospel to all creatures, all nations. And so some of us have a hard time, and let's just be honest, evangelizing, proclaiming the gospel, preaching uh, in boldness. We need to pray for that. We need to opportunity that because the Bible tells us to open our mouths and declare. You know, sometimes it's better and easier. uh, I wouldn't say better, but it's easier for us to do a good deed, to be kind, uh, to love people. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm just going to preach the gospel just my life, man, my behavior. That's not preaching the gospel. We have a message. We are ambassadors of the kingdom and we have to message to declare that the Christ is risen. He forgives our sin and he forgives other people's sin. He is making going to make all things new. We're going to have to give an account to living in the dead. Jesus is returning and reigning and he loves and wants people to repent and have mercy. And he died for sins and he gives us the spirit. These are all things that must be said out of our mouths to people because they don't know. How will they know unless someone speaks and God has given us this great opportunity? Yes, it is good to have good works. That opens up a lot of opportunities to declare the good news of the gospel. Many people won't listen unless they know that you care. So it is good to start relationally, to have good works, to give people food and bread and all that different stuff. But we must not neglect preaching the gospel. Lydia heard with her ears, responded with her heart, confessed with her mouth. She got saved, man. And it was the power of God, this gospel that was proclaimed by the boldness of Paul the apostle. And God wants to give us this boldness to herald the good news of Jesus. So Lydia responds, this is awesome, because the Bible says that in heaven, when one person repents, man, the angels, they just, they go crunk, they go crazy, they're rejoicing, right? But oftentimes, we don't see things in the spirit, in the heavenly realm, we look at the flesh. We look at, well, it was only one person. Uh, It wasn't even a crowd. Or there was only women. What about the men? What about the man that Paul had in the vision? No, Paul had been working and probably was wondering what was going on. But he trusted God. He didn't have have that stop him or discourage him. He preached the gospel and God knew what was going to happen. You see, God was planting the gospel and his kingdom in a new continent. That's why he didn't go to just a certain region in Asia Minor or Galatia, the providence of there. No, the gospel God wanted to spread. And so we see right away that the gospel spread not only with her, but her family responding. And she makes a public profession of baptism in verse 15. And after she was baptized and her whole household as well, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. She gets baptized and wanted to grow in her faith. So she asked them, She says she prevailed, right? She's begging, begging, begging. Hey, stay. Wouldn't you love that? Wouldn't you love if people said, hey, hey, come to me. Plant a church here. Preach the gospel here. It's amazing to me how important uh, the gospel is and how many people don't even come when we have services. How important the word of God is. This scripture. And they don't even come. But she's, she's saying, come, disciple 
Disciple me. And discipleship is so important. Remember, it's not just about evangelizing. It's, it's leading them to Jesus, walking with them, making disciples. It starts with evangelism, but it needs to not end there. So the text says she prevailed. She begged and she prevailed and they stayed in Philippi for a while making disciples. Because of this new convert, Lydia, they actually remained in Philippi. And what we would see in the flesh, this small seed, this one family or one lady uh, getting saved, being insignificant in Philippi and the ministry there, well, God saw something glorious and used it for his glory. You see, the Bible says that seed bears great fruit and multiplies. Let me take you to the words of Jesus in Mark chapter four, which Jim at Lydia's River actually shared this verse. And I thought it was super incredible and encouraging. It's a parable that Jesus talks about the kingdom of God uh, of a seed growing. And this is what happened. The conversion of Lydia was a seed to the whole nation, uh, the continent of Europe. Jesus said the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and night uh, sleeps and rises night and day and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces uh, itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The big idea of this parable, Jesus says, is that, you know, the sower doesn't really know what's going on. He sleeps night and day and the, the seed does its thing. It sprouts, it grows, and he doesn't really have to know that. But the earth produces the first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain, and it grows. Out of out of this one seed, you can get a lot of grain, a lot of fruit, a lot of produce. This is how the kingdom of God works. The seed of God, the gospel, went forth, and it bore much fruit. But it started with one person, and then it went to a family, and then it went to a city, and then it went to more cities, then to a region, then to a nation. We need to be thinking in the spirit like this, sowing uh, gospel seeds all around because we know out of the first convert a church would be birthed I wonder who you're praying for and what their salvation will mean to their family to their city to our world you know we'll later see as we look up next week the work in Philippi that there would be because of Paul staying here and her prevailing them to stay that they would cast out a a demon out of a girl uh, that a guard's family will get saved in Philippi and a church will be birthed. Paul and Silas would actually do more gospel work in Philippi and a church would be planted. Um, so much so we know that in Philippi there was a letter written to them about 10 years later called the book of what? Philippians. Listen to chapter 1 verse 1. Paul and Timothy, bondservants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Jesus Christ who are in Philippi with the bishops or overseers and the deacons. Ten years later, there would be a healthy, thriving church with overseers, pastors, and deacons. And the church would have been established because of the gospel work, because the sow, the seed was sown and it bore great fruit. A little seed bears much fruit. Don't underestimate you preaching the gospel to your friends, you preaching the gospel to your family. Uh, this church was one of the few churches that actually supported Paul's ministry to actually help spread the gospel all over this region in Macedonia. And he, had, if you look at Philippians and if you studied it before, which we have as a church, you can go to www.redemptiondb.com, get the archive. Uh, we did a four sermon series, uh, four messages on the book of Philippians. And this is actually sort of a thank you letter for their support to uh, this church because they helped the work to spread the gospel all over. Listen to Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians, you yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Paul gives us little cues about their partnership, about their faithfulness. They supported and loved Paul so much so that they actually sent a guy named Epaphroditus to visit Paul while he was in prison. What an encouragement. What a blessing. It's no wonder Paul greeted this church in chapter one and said, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Now, what a blessing it is. I even think about this Footsteps of Paul tour. What a blessing it is to have people that love you, that support you like a local church. I love my church to be able to, to do what I do. And they 
provide a salary and help out and serve. And they want the gospel to go forth. What, what a great thing because the gospel bears much fruit and it bore a lot of fruit through this church being planted in Philippi. One interesting thing I learned on this trip later on in history, the early church uh, leader Polycarp would actually write a letter to Philippi uh, and it would still exist this church and make a great impact in 150 AD. And it appears it was impacting the world, planting churches, a staple in the community, proclaiming the gospel, making disciples. And it all happened from an unexpected plan and the gospel of God. Paul, I don't want you to go here. I want you to go there. Plant the seed, preach the gospel, do the work. So man, I just want to remind you of that. I want to remind you to keep trusting God's plan and keep preaching the gospel because it has great, great, great impact. And we see that through Lydia's conversion. Paul's about to stay in Philippi and a church is going to be birthed and it's actually going to support his ministry and do all this crazy stuff because a seed was sown.